A lot of people ask me what are my chances after fin I finish my masters to get a H1B visa. It's not that simple to explain. In this video, I'll be telling you how H1B visa is picked up and what your chances really are if you're graduating with a master's degree versus a PhD degree versus an undergrad degree. Watch until the end. It's a short video and it's going to give you a lot of value. If you're new here and you haven't watched any of my videos, welcome. My name is Parth and I'm an engineer and I make a lot of videos on helping out international students in their journey. Every year, hundreds and thousands of people apply for their H1B visa. If you're graduating from an undergrad degree or a master's degree, which is non-STEM, US allows you to work for one year on your F1B, F1 visa through something called optional practical training or OPT. If you're graduating from any of the courses, which are STEM courses, you'll get three years of work visa. Uh, that means two years of STEM extension and then one year of OPT. During these three years, your H-1B can be picked up, right? This year, USCIS has received over 470,000 applications, which is actually down from last year where they received over 758,000 applications. This decrease in number of applications is due to recent rule of USCIS, according to which USCIS may deny or revoke multiple or duplicated petitions filed by the same petitioner or the same H-1B worker in the same fiscal year. And they said that you will not be getting any refunds on the filing fees. Here are the number of people of different country applying for H-1B visa. These numbers are from 2019. And as you can see, 70% of the applications are from one, one country that is ours, India. Let's understand what your chances are really for getting an H-1B visa. There's 85,000 slots available. USCIS first dumps all of their names and pick up from the 65,000 people. Whoever gets picked up, they get notified. People who didn't get picked up uh, and have a master's degree or a PhD degree in the US goes through another pool of 20,000. Plus, out of the remaining candidates who are not picked up, 6,800 seats are reserved for people from Singapore and Chile. So your chances of getting H-1B visa was 19%. That means on an average, out of 100 people applying, only 19 people will be getting H-1B visa. There's also a caveat here. People with master's degree or PhD degree will always have a higher chances as their name will be also picked up from that 20,000 bucket we talked about. USCIS doesn't provide very detailed data. So it's really hard to say if, if you have a STEM degree or if you have a master's degree or if you have a PhD degree, then you will be picked up, um, you know, then your chances will increase. Um, we can say yes conclusively that your chances will increase, but by how much percentage, we can't calculate that right now. Just because USCIS doesn't provide us that division on how many people are STEM courses, how many people are non-STEM courses, and how many people are PhD and master's applicants, and how many people are not. So if you didn't get your H-1B this year, you do have one to two years more work visa. Don't worry, you got time. If this was your last turn and you're considering either CAP exempt H-1B or day one CPD, I've made videos about that also. Um, go check it out on the channel and hope this video helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Thanks everyone. I'll see you in the next video.